If you want to pass the GED science exam, you need to know what to study. In this video, I'll be talking about what you need to know about the Earth's climate and weather in order to score 145 on the GED science exam and achieve your goal. This is the 12th video in the science series. And like always, it's just going to be an introduction to the topic, but I hope it'll be a great place for you to start as you begin to study. So what's the difference between climate and weather? Weather is the day-to-day -day change in the atmosphere of a specific location. If you look outside and it's rainy or windy or hot or sunny, that's weather. Climate is the average weather in a location over a period of time. This is the difference between somewhere like England, which has a moist temperate climate, where it's often rainy and where the temperature is in a moderate range, and a place like Phoenix, Arizona, which has a hot, dry climate. This doesn't mean that it never rains in Phoenix, and it doesn't mean that it's always raining in England. But it does mean that on average, it rains more in England than it does in Phoenix. Difference in climate is caused by the uneven and changing exposure to the sun's rays that different parts of the Earth receive. The equator, which is in the middle of the Earth, receives the most direct and consistent sun exposure throughout the year. That's the reason that equatorial locations are consistently warmer than locations that are closer to the northern and southern poles. Since those locations receive less sun exposure, they are on average colder. Also, because the Earth is slightly tilted, the amount of sun exposure that the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere gets varies throughout the year. That's why in the northern hemisphere, it can be colder and darker during the winter months of the year, and warmer with longer days throughout the summer. The opposite is true in the Southern Hemisphere. There are regular, predictable weather patterns related to how warmer and cooler air move. As the air surrounding the equator is warmed by the sun, it rises, creating areas of low pressure. Cooler air from the poles sinks, which creates areas of higher pressure. These areas of lower and higher pressure create a pattern of prevailing winds on both sides of the equator. Check out this wind pattern map. You might be asked to examine and interpret a map like this when you take the GED science exam. Something to notice here is that both sides of the equator have a prevailing wind pattern that moves to the east and towards the equator. Then, starting at about 30 degrees north latitude and 30 degrees south latitude, the prevailing winds flow west and toward the poles. These wind patterns are largely responsible for seasonal weather events like hurricanes and blizzards. There's a similar movement of warmer and cooler water in the ocean, which we call ocean currents. Ocean currents also influence the weather and climate of the planet. Day-to-day -day changes in weather are caused by the movement of air masses, which are big bodies of air with similar temperature, humidity, and pressure. The edge between two masses of air is called a front. A cold front is when a cold air mass displaces a warm air mass, and a warm air front is when a warm air mass rises over a cold air mass. What's called an occluded front happens when a warm air front and a cold air front merge together. Fronts are characterized by clouds and precipitation, like rain and snow. Meteorologists are scientists that study weather patterns. Meteorologists collect and analyze information about temperature, wind, pressure, humidity, cloud cover, and more. They use both real-time data and historical data to make predictions about what the weather will be like. This is really useful on a day-to-day -day basis. You probably check the weather each morning, and you might look at the forecast for the week to help you make your plans. Meteorologists also predict and monitor extreme weather events like hurricanes and tornadoes. And in doing so, they can advise evacuations that save lives. Climate change is how we refer to the fact that the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere is rising. We know this because we have many decades of data to compare to. This doesn't mean that the weather is always warmer, but it does mean that on average, the temperature is rising. This rising temperature is related to increased concentration of gases like carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere. 
These gases are known as greenhouse gases because they trap heat that would otherwise radiate into space within the atmosphere. The increased concentration of greenhouse gases is an outcome of widespread industrialization. The burning of fossil fuels like coal, gas, and oil releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Deforestation also causes an increase of carbon dioxide because forests and other natural ecosystems play a large role in the Earth's management of carbon dioxide levels. We discussed in the biology videos how carbon dioxide is one of the necessary ingredients for photosynthesis. Climate change is related to the increased melting of polar ice, rising sea levels, and more frequent and extreme weather events. Climate change is creating dangerous conditions for humans and natural ecosystems alike. In response to these growing threats, there are initiatives all over the globe to reduce the use of fossil fuels and to implement more sustainable energy solutions. Whether and how we will be able to respond effectively to climate change is a complicated logistical, financial, and political question that hasn't yet been settled. Okay, so that was a brief overview of weather and climate to help you do well on the GED science exam. Of course, there's a lot more to be learned about this, so I suggest you take some time with a GED preparation manual so that you can practice the types of questions that you will see on the test. There are also great online resources like Crash Course and Khan Academy where you can learn more about this topic. Just remember, you're not trying to become an expert. You just want to be familiar with the vocabulary that you might see so that you can confidently answer the questions. On this channel, I make videos about how to study more effectively so that you can achieve your goals. And coming up, there will be one more science video about space science. But there are also videos about all three of the other subject tests, as well as some general introductory guides. If this was helpful for you, please press the like button. That is how YouTube knows that this is a good resource for studiers. It is your support that helps me to make these resources for you. So thank you as always for watching, and until next time, happy studying.